As the second largest continent after Asia, Africa has been endowed not only by the numbers of its rising population but also with an enviable position where there is an abundance of natural resources. The unique and immensely diverse continent is a land of great potential and wealth, with a rapidly growing population and abundant natural resources. These resources include precious minerals like gold and diamonds, as well as valuable commodities such as timber and cocoa, and more recently, oil. Despite its rich history and valuable assets, Africa has also faced challenges, most notably the invasion of its lands by Western powers in its early years. This legacy of colonization has had lasting effects on the continent and its people, and is a dark chapter in the history of Africa. Nevertheless, the continent continues to thrive and is poised for further growth and prosperity in the future. This has been made evident in recent times with the emergence of the new global power play, which has undoubtedly augmented Africa's position on an international scale. Join us in our video today as we explore the new scramble for Africa by world powers. To ensure you don't miss out on great content like this, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the Africa Info Hub. Also, kindly click on the notification bell. Without any delay, let us dive into today's video. Colonial masters, like Britain, had ruled over countries like Ghana, Nigeria and Sierra Leone. The British also extended their reach to other nations like South Africa and southern Rhodesia now known as Zimbabwe, Lesotho, and the like. It is also possible to bring up the French invasion, where Senegal, Burkina Faso, Mali, and other nations were their colonies generally, Africa, without a doubt has played a keen role in the development of the nations of its colonial master. In present days however, in what some claim to be the most intense competition for influence on the continent since the Cold War, world leaders from global superpowers such as China, Russia, and the United States are scrambling to and throughout Africa to gain influence on the continent. For instance, Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine has been a disastrous and expensive failure for the Russian state in Europe. The flaws and weaknesses of its soldiers have been revealed, with the slaughtering of tens of thousands of its troops. Russia's economy is no longer connected to many global markets and technological advancements due to sanctions. However, Russia has been making significant headway in Africa, and is pushing for new allies and achieving new victories beyond Europe, even a year after sending troops into Ukraine. Leading diplomats from President Putin's camp have visited Africa, with the latest being Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. Although the recent trip to Africa by the Russian Foreign Minister was unplanned, it is safe to say that it was surprising. In fact, it won't be far-fetched to even suggest that he was given a warm welcome. Sergei Lavrov visited Eswatini, Botswana, Angola, and South Africa on his second trip in eight months, and continued to Mali, Tunisia, Mauritania, Algeria, and Morocco in February, just as he had been scheduled to. Lavrov's visit to South Africa, however, sparked an inquest, with a host of concerns raised about the alliance. Lately, South Africa has under pressure from its Western allies to support those who oppose the invasion of Ukraine, but the South African nation has been steadfast and obstinate, refusing to get bullied. South Africa's love affair with Russia has aged beautifully over time, just like fine wine. The Southern African nation has a strong affinity towards their Russian counterparts who apparently came to their aid in a gruesome dark age in their past. They recall assistance from earlier eras, where the Soviet Union trained and armed the African National Congress and other liberation forces on the continent under apartheid. Some surprisingly popular first names in South Africa, such as Soviet, Moscow, and Lenin, serve as living memorials to these historical ties. Perhaps the key to Russia's attractiveness to many African countries is its capacity to position itself as an anti-imperialist foe, playing to the continent's long history of Western tyranny and popular hatred of the likes of the US, UK, and France. This theory has often been suggested by analysts and some schools of thoughts. For African countries, cooperation with Russia provides an alternative to Western powers and China. Russia on the other hand, believes that its presence on the continent is for cooperation in the fields of trade and investment. As a matter of fact, Russia's commerce with African nations doubled to roughly $20 billion annually between 2015 and 2022. Furthermore, these connections have been suggested to provide a platform for Russian military equipment and technical expertise, including weapons sales and training, in addition to influencing foreign policy. 
Economic relations have also been purported to provide Russia access to rare minerals and metals like lithium in Zimbabwe, and aluminium in Guinea. Due to their importance for both the shift to green energy and digital technology, these resources are in high demand. Russia's seeming ally, Belarus, saw its president, Alexander Lukashenko, touch down in Zimbabwe with the aim of enhancing strong cooperation between the two countries. The US-Africa Leaders' Summit returned to Washington last month after an eight-year absence amid increased geopolitical unrest and economic uncertainty throughout the world. Why? Because the importance of Africa's global voice, economic potential, and geopolitical position have been magnified and therefore cannot be overstated. And interestingly, the USA have now noticed this. In its interactions with Africa, the US has typically prioritized security. In addition to dominating perceptions in both the public and private spheres, this Cold War perspective also draws attention away from the real economic and geopolitical prospects the continent presents to investors in the 21st century. Over the past two decades, the effects of the 9-11 attacks have enhanced this strategy, and more recently, the United States has ignored the fact that the countries on the continent have their own strategic interests, and instead seen Africa as a field of conflict in its rivalry with China. The December 2022 conference, however, provided indications that the Biden administration is aware of the drawbacks of that strategy. As a result, the beginning of the 2023 year has seen the United States make noticeable progress on its commitments to African leaders in Washington. The focus of the engagement in present times has been on opportunities rather than threats, corporate involvement rather than security, and linkages between the diaspora and Africa's soft power. The theme persisted when U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken released a new U.S. strategy toward sub-Saharan Africa earlier this year, emphasizing that the U.S. will seek relationships with African countries rather than imposing its will on them. The Biden administration is taking Africa's growth as a significant global actor seriously, as evidenced by Blinken's several trips there, from Senegal to South Africa and Kenya in 2022, as well as Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's trip last month. The 10-day tour by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to promote all the economic opportunities that exist between the United States and the second-largest continent in the world was part of the Biden administration's major campaign to increase engagement with Africa. Yellen is the first member of the government to travel to the continent since President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, First Lady Jill Biden, and a number of cabinet secretaries declared their intention to travel to Africa this year during the U.S.-Africa Leaders' Summit in December. The Biden-Harris administration has said that over the next three years, it will invest at least $55 billion in Africa for a range of projects, including economic growth, addressing climate change, constructing healthcare systems, bolstering manufacturing, and constructing digital infrastructure. Biden's commitment to African nations has been lauded globally, with most believing it heralds a new era in the tense relationship between the US and the continent that developed under Donald Trump's administration. Officials from the administration highlight the two-way relationship between the U.S. and Africa, emphasizing that it is one that involves the mutual contribution of African leaders and their vision for the continent. Africa undoubtedly offers immense potential for those willing to take a chance, and there are many who have already done so. However, there's arguably no other nation in the world whose involvement in Africa comes anywhere close to China's, in terms of scope and depth. It is the continent of Africa's greatest trading partner, a major bilateral creditor, and a significant source of investment in infrastructure. Several surveys have suggested that about one-eighth of the industrial output on the continent is reportedly produced by Chinese companies, whereas Chinese constructed digital infrastructures have been imperative communication platforms for African nations. Unsurprisingly, security, military, and political ties have also been on a steady rise, with notable alliances being formed. Evidently, recent reports have implied that China has emerged as the highest investor in Africa over the past 10 years based on the number of new jobs produced, which has been well over 18,000, with a progressive significant increase in the number of jobs created each year. Through his Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative, which has grown since its inception and includes Chinese investments in projects that develop land and sea trade routes to continents around the world, President Xi Jinping, who is entering his second decade in office, has invested heavily in the continent. 
It has been customary for the top Chinese diplomat to visit Africa on his or her first international tour for more than three decades. And so, following in the footsteps of his predecessors, who have been beginning each year with a trip to Africa, China's new foreign minister Qin Gang began his term with a week-long journey to five African nations. During his visits to Ethiopia, Gabon, Angola, Benin, and Egypt in January, Qin, who until recently served as China's ambassador to the United States, emphasized that Beijing does not view the continent as a battlefield for a geopolitical struggle with the West. The new $80 million African Centers for Disease Control, part of China's Health Silk Road, was inaugurated by Qin in Addis Ababa, the seat of the African Union, to much excitement. The project itself was once intended to be a joint effort by the United States, China, and Africa. However, under the Trump administration, ties between Washington and Beijing deteriorated as a result of American worries about the possibility of Chinese espionage and data theft. Beijing referred to the claims as ridiculous, and the US pulled out of the World Health Organization. In addition, there were reports suggesting that during his visit, Qin announced a partial debt forgiveness for Ethiopia's massive $13.7 billion debt to China. China has been charged by the West with engaging in debt trap diplomacy in an effort to assert control over other emerging nations who are heavily indebted. That was refuted by Qin in Addis Ababa, where he argued that China has always been committed to helping Africa ease its debt burden. Qin stated at a news conference on his first visit to Addis Ababa that Africa should be a big stage for the international cooperation, not an arena for major force rivalry. He said that China actively took part in the G20 initiative to suspend debt service payments, signed or achieved debt relief agreements with 19 African nations, and had suspended the most G20 member debt service payments. Some analysts though, have been surprised by the Chinese foreign minister's trips to Gabon and Benin, but experts claim they were part of China's growing engagement with Francophone West Africa. It appears that China is presently constructing the new economic community of West African states headquarters, just as it did for the African Union in Addis Ababa. In Central Africa, Ambassador Qin commemorated the 40th anniversary of the inception of diplomatic ties between China and Angola. In addition to being a crucial security ally for China, Angola is also heavily indebted. Since China is responsible for almost 40% of Angola's debt, it has also been reasoned that Ambassador Qin's meetings with the Angolan government must have had elements of the dialogue in Ethiopia. However for Egypt, it would seem that the Suez Canal is of strategic importance to China because of its numerous investments there, including in the new administrative capital being built outside Cairo. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, Qin Gang, the newly appointed Chinese Foreign Minister, and U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen have all visited Africa in the past month. While U.S. President Joe Biden hosted a U.S.-Africa summit in December, seen as an effort to reclaim some of the influence Washington has lost to China over the past decade or more, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, French President Emmanuel Macron, and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, have also made the trip to the continent. A number of experts have emphasized that the flurry of diplomatic action should not be viewed as a scramble for Africa, since the continent now firmly occupies a seat at the table. Thanks to its bargaining strength. Stephen Gruzd, head of the African Governance and Diplomacy Program at the South African Institute of International Affairs, remarked that, the recognition that African governments and African societies are active in their own right, so they are not a pawn in someone else's game, but rather players sitting around the board. Africa is noticeably rising, amid impressive present-day efforts to explore and expand its potentials. And, in truth, it has caught the attention of the world, who now want a peace. Notwithstanding, it is important for African countries to be aware of the risks and to negotiate from a position of strength in order to ensure that they benefit fully from the increased interest and investment in their countries and resources. At the same time, it is also important for global powers to respect the sovereignty and agency of African nations, and to engage in responsible and sustainable investment practices. It is ultimately up to the African continent to decide whom to liaise and interact with as well as which superpowers or other countries to maintain relationships with. The African continent must also decide whether it is advantageous to maintain, for example, a balanced approach, like doing business with everyone who wants to do business, 
while also choosing the form and extent of their relationship with these external players. What do you think of our video? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and share with your friends on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter.